Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you have been investing in 2022, it hasn't been a very smooth sailing so far. All the indexes are pretty much down in double digits year to date. S&P is down about 13.31% year to date. Dow Jones is down 9.22, so relatively done much better than S&P 500. NASDAQ is in bear territory, 23.38% down. And Russell 2000, which is down almost 17%. So, so far, it has been a very rough year for most of the investors. Generally, when you invest in stock market, you can gain either via capital appreciation or via dividends. And dividends is one of the most popular ways for a lot of investors who follow the dividend methodology so they can earn dividends on top of capital appreciation. Dividend stocks in general are divided into many categories. So there could be a growth stock, there could be a value stock. If you consider Apple, I would still say it's a growth stock, but it also pays dividends. So it could be a dividend growth stock. Whereas if you look at a Coca-Cola, it would be a pure value play as opposed to a growth play, but they pay also dividends. So that's a value stock that pays dividend. So in today's video, we will touch upon why dividend investing is important, whether you should be investing in stocks or ETFs, the pros and cons. And I'll give you ideas for four dividend ETFs that you can invest in to hedge against inflation. So if you enjoy today's video, don't forget to hit that like button. And without further ado, let's dive in. Dividend investment is a very popular topic among investors. There's a whole community of retail investors who just focus on dividend investment, so they are able to live off of their investment. As per one of the research from Fidelity Investment, they have found out that dividend payments have accounted for over 40% return of the overall stock market since 1930s. That is a very, very impressive return considering it's not capital appreciation. Now, what's more important is that when the stock price is struggling, dividends they help us offset those declines. So for example, for S&P 500, when it fell during the 1930s and 2000, dividends approximately were able to completely offset the decline. And in the 1940s and 70s, when inflation surged, dividends accounted for 65 and 71% of the S&P 500 return, respectively. This is amazing to keep in mind that dividend investing is a very important field that you as an investor, if you are just starting out investing, if you are in your teens or in your 20s, I would focus on growth investing, but I would not throw dividend investing out of the picture because in times like these, especially high inflationary times, dividend investment does play a role. And this is one of the ways that you can learn to hedge your portfolio. Now you can get dividends by investing either in stocks or ETFs. Bunch of stocks put together in a fund is an ETF. If you don't know what ETF, index fund and mutual funds are, take a look at my this video. This is the, one of the most common questions that a lot of investors have. Is it better to invest in stocks? or ETFs. Now, this is a very age old question and everybody has their own answer. In my personal opinion, if you have the time to research, if you have the time to keep up with the company's financial statements, and if you following the earnings report, if you're able to analyze the growth, if you're able to analyze the dividends, etc., then stocks might be a better option for you. Whereas ETS gives you a much easier way to invest because it's a bunch of stocks. It's not dependent on one company. So a one company is not going to drag the performance down or bring the performance up at the same time. It's going to be a much more aligned to how the index performs because they are not trying to beat the index. So always keep in mind a stock can always beat an index performance. Whereas an ETF, the chances of it beating an index performance is highly unlikely because they are just trying to track the performance of an index. If you're planning to buy dividend stocks and if you go and type on Google, you'll see a ton of articles. Some of these articles are like these 15 of the best dividend stocks to buy in 2020. And if you go through the 23 pages of it, you will see Exxon Mobil, Suncor Energy. You'll also get an advertisement here. You get the point. If you go to Investopedia and you type top dividends to invest in May of 2022, you'll get options like NLY, NRZ, Lumen, One Main Financial, TFSL. So you have a lot of options when it comes to investing in stocks because a lot of companies, they pay dividends. However, if you don't have the time to research each stock or keep up with the stock performance, ETF might be an option for you. For you. If you're buying ETF, there are some pros and cons that you should think of. Number one, it saves you a lot of time and headache for researching the companies because fund managers have already done the research. They know they have done all the analysis and they have put together a bunch of stocks in their ETF to track the fund performance as compared to the index. Secondly, 
you will get a lot of diversification off the bat. Most likely those ETFs would have 30 to 50 plus stocks in the portfolio, which is going to give you the optimal diversification. On the other hand, the cons of investing in ETF, number one, is that you cannot get away without paying a fund fee. Whereas when you invest in a stock, there's no fund fee involved because you're just buying the stock of the company. So those are some of the pros and cons that you need to keep in mind if you're investing in a dividend ETF. If you are struggling with investment at the current point in time, Time, I can totally understand that and if you don't have the time and to research about companies whether you should buy 3M or not because they have a lot of lawsuits against them or you should buy Coca-Cola or Pepsi here are the four dividend ETFs that I can suggest to you that you can invest in to open a small position that may be able to give protection to your main portfolio so that you can earn dividends via this the first ETF Schwab strategic trust US dividend equity ETF Tricker symbol SCHD. The second one is Vanguard's High Dividend Yield ETF VYM. The third one is iShare Core Dividend Growth ETF DGRO. And fourth one is iShare Core High Dividend ETF HDV. I'm going to skip the DYV and FDL. The reason is because their expense ratios are pretty high. And when you actually compare the companies and the returns on these, they are pretty similar in nature. All four of these ETFs have a very low expense ratio, so 0.06% to 0.06%. 0.08%. The Schwab SCHD has about 35 billion under asset under management. Vanguard has 41 billion and the two of the BlackRock one have 22 and 9 billion asset under management. Then you look at the dividends for it. The S Schwab gets an A plus whereas the DGRO get A. The others Vanguard gets a B plus with HDV B minus. The DGRO is the lowest at $51.69 as the time of the last close. Uh, Schwab is around trading around $79. VYM $112 and HDV if you have a smaller portfolio, you might want to look into DGRO or SCHD as opposed to VYM or HDV. Now next comes the dividend yield. This is very important because you are buying these ETFs for dividend yield. We'll touch upon the top 10 holdings a little bit later because there's a lot of similarities. SCHD is about 2.86%. VYM is 2.77. So very similar. You have DGRO about 2.07 and HDV about 3.09. Just from a dividend yield standpoint, SCHD and HDV looks more promising. But between those two, I would go with SCHD because they have a lower expense ratio. That's one. And number two, if you look at their dividend growth for three year and five year, they are in double digits as compared to any other ETF right over here. Most of the ETFs, they provide a quarterly dividend payout. Looking at the price performance, year to date, SCHD has returned negative as opposed to the other one, HDV is up 8.8%. So that looks amazing. But from a 10 year standpoint, if you would have invested $10,000, you would have gained 194% in SCHD. So SCHD has been in business for way long longer as compared to some of these newer ETFs. But even in HDV, you would have pretty much doubled your money at 92%. Now, based on what we looked right now, if you're thinking about combining HDV or SCHD, let's look at the top 10 holdings and understand. In SCHD, Merck, Pfizer, Amgen, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and IBM, Texas Instruments, Verizon, Lockheed Martin, and Home Depot. So the top 10 holdings account for 41.38 of the total portfolio. In HDV case, the first one is ExxonMobil. So oil prices have been doing very well recently. So that's the reason they have outperformed SCHD. Then you have AbbVie, Johnson & Johnson, Chevron. So in top 10, you have two energy companies over here. You have JP Morgan, a financial company. You have Verizon Communication, Philip Morris, Merck, Procter & Gamble and Coca-Cola. The top 10 accounts for 53.44%. So this begs us the question, is HDV better than SCHD? Both of them are very similar. HDV has a slightly more expense ratio, 0.02% more, but they have returned much higher ROI year to date as opposed to SCHD. And one of the main reasons is because the oil and energy sector has, has been outperforming because of a lot of macroeconomic factors like the Russia-Ukraine war. So there you go. There were some quick ideas about two of the dividend ETFs that I think are very popular. And I think are good investments to hedge your portfolio in this high inflationary environment. Are you investing in any of these dividend ETFs? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit the like, click on subscribe and ring the bell notification. I will see you next time, Investor Family, but don't forget to invest for tomorrow.